Прямо сейчас мы с вами находимся в 8000 километрах от Москвы, на левом берегу реки Амур, набережной моего родного города Благовещенск. Это единственный город Российской Федерации, который находится на границе с другим государством. Слева от меня находится город Побратим, город Китайской Народной Республики Хейхэ. Это царские ворота, одна из главных достопримечательностей нашего города. Она построена в 1891 году к приезду цесаревича Николая, будущего императора Николая II. Триумфальная арка выполнена в русском стиле в виде каменных ворот. Высота сооружения составляет 20 метров. Оба шатра увенчаны гибами России. В нашем городе много хороших вузов со своей глубокой историей, но я являюсь студентом Амурского государственного университета. Единственное среди всех вузов Дальнего Востока, которые готовят будущих специалистов ракетно-космического профиля. Наш вуз активно развивается в сфере космоса. Так, в июле 2019 года с космодрома «Восточный» был запущен на спутник формата Кубсат Трио, первым среди всех вузов Дальнего Востока. Наша команда по ракетному моделированию станет первой не только среди всех вузов Дальнего Востока, но и в России, которая этим летом отправится в США и совместно с колледжем Северного Сиэтла примет участие в международных соревнованиях по ракетному моделированию. Я очень горжусь проделанной работой как сотрудников нашего университета, так и своей команды, которые своими действиями упорно доказали, что наш девиз – это АМГУ – смелость быть первым. В 2019 году Амурский государственный университет посетил преподаватель физики из колледжа Северного Светла. У нас наладились дружеские взаимоотношения, и работа, которая началась вестись в нашем университете на базе своего ракетного клуба, получила интересное развитие в плане взаимного обогащения новыми идеями, новыми направлениями в ракетном моделировании. Этот визит стал возможен благодаря программе Фулбрайта, одной из крупнейших финансируемых правительством США международных обменных программ в области образования. Одним из самых интересных мероприятий, которые Трейси провел со студентами АМГУ, стало практическое занятие по сборке американской модели ракеты «Патриот», привезенной им из США. Данное занятие вызвало огромный интерес у студентов, даже у тех из них, кто уже имел опыт сборки подобных моделей российского производства. Новичкам мастер-класс позволил получить ответы на вопросы о важности аэродинамической формы и выборе материалов для изготовления собственных летных прототипов моделей ракет. Продолжившееся после этого активное сотрудничество между ракетными клубами АМГУ и колледжа Северного Сиэтла позволило в 2020 году получить грант посольства США в Москве, посвященный празднованию 45-й годовщины стыковки космических кораблей «Союз Аполлон». So, in any case, um, again, thank you very much, and good luck with your academic and professional career. Здравствуйте. Меня зовут Бузиков Руслан Александрович. Работаю я инженером научно-образовательного центра Амурского государственного университета. Занимаюсь постройкой ракеты, которая является точной копией ракеты американских коллег колледжа Северного Светла и предназначена для тестирования системы выведения полезной нагрузки формата CubeSat 2U. Ракета состоит из трех основных частей. Это головной обтекатель формы хака, отсек полезной нагрузки и хвостового отсека с тремя стабилизаторами с углом стреловидности 45 градусов. 
Помимо этого, ракета включает в себя отсек с бортовым компьютером, кожух твердотопливного двигателя. Я занимаюсь механической сборкой, покраской ракеты. При работе с проектом мы столкнулись с рядом проблем, а именно в проблеме с двигателем, то есть российские и американские твердотопливные двигатели очень сильно отличаются. Ввиду этого их невозможно адаптировать под наш проект. Мы разрабатываем собственный твердотопливный двигатель, который будет являться аналогом американского с рядом улучшенных характеристик. My name is Varankov Alexander and I belong to the electronic team of this exciting project. So, my main purpose is uh, development of two unit CubeSat that uh, consist of three boards. Uh, the first uh, one uh, serves uh, to transmit uh, the data from the pilot uh, to the ground stations. Uh, the second one uh, is needed uh, to receive the uh, to receive a GPS uh, coordinates uh, and uh, uh, talking them uh, to the main microcontroller on the last board. Uh, the last one is required in order to uh, get telemetry such as acceleration, speed, uh, altitude, and uh, temperature. Uh, this uh, data is uh, very vital for us uh, because. Uh, We also need to make post-flight analysis. All boards were calculated and designed by our electronic team. We just order the manufacture of it. Меня зовут Кудок Софья. В ракетном клубе я отвечаю за бортовой компьютер. Бортовой компьютер служит для безопасного вывода и разделения системы спасения ракеты. Система спасения состоит из двух парашютов, тормозного и основного. Для того, чтобы настроить бортовой компьютер, мы подключаемся к нему по сети Wi-Fi и переходим на специальную страницу настроек, где мы указываем высоту, на которой выпустится тормозной парашют, и задержку, через которую выпустится основной парашют. После этого мы можем спокойно запускать ракету, зная, что система спасения сработает. Я Абдулло Хурумбаев, я студент первого курса инженерно-физического факультета. Когда я принимал решение поступить в АМГУ на космическую специальность, основным фактором являлось то, что я буду работать на космодроме Восточном. Я понимал, что нужно будет учить много теории и читать много технической литературы, но в то время как я являюсь практиком. Вступив в клуб ракетного моделирования, я получил возможность разбавлять иногда скучную теорию с практикой, поработать, что называется, руками над своей первой собственной моделью ракеты и участвовать в международном проекте со своего клуба. В ракетном клубе, как первокурсник, мне пришлось столкнуться с многими сложными знаниями из разных областей, не входящих в программу моего обучения по специальности. Особенно мне нравится осуществлять разработку разных частей ракеты и физическую сборку. Я также очень рад, что у меня появилась возможность развивать навыки своего английского языка, так как у нас идет сейчас международный проект с колледжем Северной Сиэтла и с их ракетным клубом со студентами и преподавателями которого мы еженедельно общаемся в Зуме. Хотя я еще первокурсник, но я уже осуществил свою первую зарубежную поездку в Армению за визой в США. Мне до сих пор не верится, что такое возможно было бы в любом другом вузе России. Всем привет, меня зовут Анойкин Александр. Я студент третьего курса архитектурной специальности Амурского государственного университета. И я представляю нашу команду, которая в коллаборации с колледжем Северного Сиэтла поедет в Америку на участие в соревнованиях в штате Орегон. В нашей команде я отвечаю за работу пускового контейнера, за его создание. Состав контейнера очень простой. Он состоит из пары шаговых двигателей, которые выталкивают нашу полезную нагрузку. Это первый такой контейнер, который я видел. Сделал я его полностью сам. Hi, my name is Pasha Gerashenko. I am the third year student of Amur State University and I am the proud member of Amur State University Rocketry Club. My main job uh, mainly consists of uh, translating and being the bridge between the teams of Amur, our Rocketry Club and uh, North Seattle College Rocketry Club. Also, my job uh, is to translate technical documentation and um, mainly being a help to all of our team. When our 
Teams started communicating with each other. We had to choose the platform on which we would be chatting with each other and exchanging information. Eventually, we moved on to the Discord server, which we created together. In, in our Discord server, we text to each other about our technical progress on how we built rockets. And what is most important, uh, in my opinion, our Discord server is the biggest contribution to our cultural exchange part of our relationship. Students с обеих сторон получили прекрасную возможность взаимодействия по созданию совместного такого устройства, когда необходимо было находить общие точки соприкосновения и в техническом плане, и в плане взаимодействия, понимания друг друга. Для этого организовывались при поддержке международного отдела большое количество телемостов, когда в режиме реального времени Мы имели возможность общаться с представителями клуба, с Трейси, обмениваться мнениями, буквально в режиме реального времени рисовать схемы предполагаемых устройств, искать взаимодействие во взаимодействии, как они будут установлены. После летных испытаний наша полезная нагрузка будет отправлена в США и установлена на ракету американских коллег колледжа Северного Сиэтла и будет запущена с пусковой площадки штата Орегон в рамках проведения соревнований. Пожелаем им удачи! To prepare yourself for participation at the model rocketry competitions, especially international ones, you need to be very knowledgeable, skilled and also lucky. The United Students team of Amur State University and North Seattle College can do without it for this kind of advanced technical art. In order to be absolutely confident in the successful completion of their projects, both clubs had to resolve a lot of technical issues before going to competitions. But let's talk about everything in proper order. On June 3rd, our student team finished final tests of their flight devices two U CubeSat payload and the container which separates the payload from the rocket. The team that worked on the project to be presented at the rocketry competition, Northwest Extreme Rocket Show in the United States, consisted of the following club members. Full-time engineers of the club, Voronkov Alexander, Buzikov Ruslan, and the third-year students from the Department of the Physics and Engineering. Nokian Alexander, Ostafura Vladislav, and Gerashin Kapavel. On June 5, the young specialists finally went off to Seattle. The travel was long and twisted. In order to get on a direct international flight to the USA, the students had to travel via Moscow to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, and then they had to fly to Seattle for 14 hours over the North Pole and Canada. After a long security check at the American Customs, our students were welcomed to Seattle by the president of the North Seattle College Rocketry Club, Alex Langenstein, and the club's chief constructor, Peter Fonsten. My name is Alex Langenstein. I am a student at North Seattle College in the mechatronics program. So I'm the president of North Seattle College's Rocketry Club. Uh, and as the president, uh, my duties were mainly coordinating uh, the Zoom meetings, uh, coordinating the in-person meetings for the North Seattle College students. I've been working with Amherst State since the first time that they approached Tracy in 2018. And they said, we've seen North Seattle College Rocketry Club compete in the uh, IREC or the Intercollegiate Rocketry Engineering Competition in White Sands, New Mexico. Uh, and they were very impressed with our performance, so they asked uh, if they could initiate an exchange happening. Uh, Tracy went over there and visited with them, communicating with their, the Amher State University team, um, getting a feel for how they work and what goals they would like to accomplish and how that translates to what we can accomplish and what we want to accomplish as well. Um, that's really been a major contribution. I really do enjoy technical writing. Um, in 2019, uh, I started doing, I did three simultaneous NASA workforce development programs that focused on mission concept writing, uh, technical writing, 
in May of 2021, uh, started working at, in a private aerospace company. Um, so my work there has really um, shown me how what we're doing in the club directly translates to the real world. My name is Peter Funston. Um, I'm a student at North Seattle College uh, in my third year there working on an engineering degree. Um, I've been a part of the North Seattle College Rocketry Club for approximately one year uh, and I am the primary rocket builder for this project. Uh, my background is in aerospace machining. I spent six years as a, des or a designer and machinist uh, for aerospace molds, mostly turbine engine parts. My next education step is going to be uh, University of Washington Aerospace Engineering program uh, starting in the fall of 2022. I have no clue where I want to work or what I want to do with my engineering degree, um, but opportunities will be there uh, and I just need to be well equipped when the opportunities present themselves. One of my favorite things about this project is uh, the collaboration between Amur um, and North Seattle. Uh, I think it's an incredibly important time to have a collaboration uh, of this magnitude, um, and I'm very proud to be a part of it. After settling at the hotel in Seattle, Emmer students were relieved to find out that all flight devices and spare parts in their luggage made it through the journey undamaged. Our young rocketeers have started assembling and testing them right away at the hotel. On the next day, Russian University team had to visit the North Seattle College Rocketry Club to integrate the devices into the model rocket, built by the American students. During those days, Russian and American students got to know each other better. All members of the NSC Rocketry Club assisted our students not only in solving the technical issues, but also the routine things. It was very informative for future Russian aerospace engineers to learn how the NSC Rocketry Club workshop is arranged and equipped, the main lab of which is located in the college's underground parking lot. It is convenient for noisy and dirty mechanical work. Our students were interested in learning about the club's activity practices. They've observed how American students build their rockets, as well as how they recruit and interact with the new members. Also, Russian students visited an electronic shop in Seattle to buy some lacking components. That was a good experience. Our guys from Blagoveshinsk were assisted by two NSC Rocketry Club members, twin brothers Avery and Max Shulky. They are very kind and funny guys who tend to wear similar clothes. Despite a huge workload, MSU students managed to get a tour of college's campus during the payload's GPS test. The next day, the work of Russian and American students in the club continued. At the evening, they were divided into groups. First group have visited the NSC traditional annual event called Engineering Night. Students got acquainted with the professionals in the airspace and mechanical engineering fields. The experts told the young audience about the specifics of the jobs and answered the questions about the profession and technical issues. The second group was invited to dinner at the restaurant with the former president of the NSC, Dr. Warren Brown. He is a graduate of the Fulbright program and visited our university in April 2019. It was thanks to his initiative and support we were able to establish a partnership between the two educational institutions. This was a very heartwarming meeting. Everyone present at the dinner was constantly repeating, we finally made it. Also, it turned out that from the restaurant's veranda, you could see the house where the famous American romantic comedy drama film Sleepless in Seattle was filmed, starring Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. It had an unforgettable impression on us. Their first three days in the USA, Russian students were literally sleepless, and on the fourth day, they had the early morning road trip on four different cars to the Oregon State, where the Northwest Extreme Rocket Show had taken place. The day before the launch, the United Students team of North Seattle and Moore State 
had to defend their rocket project to be allowed to launch it. Since the model rocket considered to be the L3 level qualified, it has the highest safety and structure's reliability requirements and will be launched with the use of the solid fuel motor Aerotech M1350 with a thrust 5,293 newtons per second with the goal to reach the altitude of 2 kilometers. The rocket includes the dual deployment system, parachute recovery system, which includes the drogue and main parachutes, as well as the payload and the container, which is needed to separate the payload from the rocket. Um, the switch interrupts the positive for the battery supply. Okay. Um, so when the switch is off, the charges don't have access to power. Okay. Uh, so here's our eBay. Um, so there's a single piece of all thread that goes all the way through it. Uh, there's a nylock nut holding it in place on this side. After we install the batteries tonight, mm -hmm. uh, we'll put a nylock nut on this side. Okay, um, so what's the, uh, what kind of all-thread? Uh, it's 5 sixteenths uh, steel. After a lengthy and thorough inspection, the permission was granted. From the College of North Seattle, the rocket project was presented by Peter Funston. From the MSU, by Alexander Anoykin. The United team had the whole night to make some final adjustments to the rocket based on the recommendations from the launch site managers. To avoid even the slightest mistakes, the guys constantly kept in touch with Blagovetsk via video phone calls with the main developers of the payload, Alexander Voronkov and Ruslan Buzikov. <laughs> В смысле, контейнер? Нет, корпус ракеты просто положили. All that remained for Emirates State University and North Sierra College Rocketry Club students was to hope for favorable weather conditions on the launch day. 12th and 13th of June were the most stressful and responsible days of the year for the MSU Rocketry Club team. Our students finally participated at the Northwest Extreme Rocket Show in the United States of America. Members of both teams were working hard for the last few days to make sure that the flight would go smoothly. As the result, the launch was successful, but it took some patience and luck. It took three attempts, as it required a unique mechanism to ignite the motor in such a powerful rocket. We have North Seattle College, uh, partnering with Amar State University, Moore, which I understand is in Russia. And five, four, three, two, one. Finally, the rocket reached the altitude of 1,772 meters and successfully deployed the payload at Apogee. The launch was accompanied by some accidents. As it turned out, the charges for separating the nose cone were too powerful. The main parachute got entangled in the payload bay. As a result, the mother rocket was descending on a drog parachute at a total speed of 40 meters per second. The team was able to locate the mother rocket quickly, 800 meters away from the launch site in the northeast direction. During the landing, only fins were slightly damaged at the impact with the ground. It took much more time and effort of all the United team to locate the container with the payload. It landed 2.6 kilometers away from the launch site. It was found only on the next day. Parachute recovery system worked perfectly. The container and the payload got safely separated from the rocket and descended at a total speed of 5 meters per second. The main tasks of the payload were the following. Getting altitude, temperature, air pressure, acceleration data and GPS coordinates, recording the data on SD card, transmitting the flight data to the ground station, recording flight video. The first two tasks were achieved with flying colors. The MSU students were especially pleased by received GPS coordinates, because this was the first time they were working with this module, and they've even written their own software for it. Sadly, 
supply data transmission got interrupted at 1,600 meters altitude. As it turned out, the antennas were not powerful enough to amplify the signal. Video recording was working as planned, but only inside the container. Last-minute checkup revealed that there was a technical risk of the payload recovery system failure. As a result, it was decided to keep the payload inside the container during descent. Despite the troubles that occurred, it can be confidently stated that the team of the Emory Rocketry Club was able to successfully cope with the project tasks. Both the payload and the container were proven to be completely functional and durable to withstand stress forces, which our students hadn't faced before in the development of onboard rocket modules. The Russian and American students were working harmoniously during the competition and proved their ability to work together on advanced technical projects. After the launch, members of the United student team had a technical debrief, during which they've analyzed data from the rocket, calculated the dependencies of the measured values to time, and did the flight route of the payload with GPS coordinates. Finally, everyone in the team was relieved because the cultural program began the next day. which is 52 stories, 520 feet or 158 meters up in the air. Very tip of the needle is 60 stories, 605 feet or 184 meters. The Museum of Flight in Seattle is the largest non-profit air and space museum in the world. It possesses over 160 aircraft and spacecraft, tens of thousands of artifacts, including the legendary Soviet jet fighters MiG-15, Yak-9U, the famous Concorde supersonic passenger aircraft, which, by the way, made its retirement flight to the museum from New York. Speaking of speed, the Concorde is not the fastest aircraft in the museum. The jewel of the collection is definitely the Lockheed M21, the twin brother of the more famous SR-71 Blackbird, the United States Air Force strategic supersonic reconnaissance aircraft, the unique aircraft of the last century, the world's fastest mass-produced aircraft. Only this one, the only surviving M21 prototype, still has the same supersonic drone on the fuselage. It was very fascinating to learn that the museum has an exposition dedicated to modern rocketry called Inspiring Rockets. Developed in partnership with the National Association of Rocketry in the United States, it tells about the influence modern rocketry has had in shaping the lives of young enthusiasts since the beginning of the space age. The exhibit showcases artifacts from Harry Stein and Vern Estes' collections of modern rockets. Also includes several recent examples of championship winning hobby and sport rockets built and flown by rocketeers young and old. By the way, development of modern rocketry in the United States solved the biggest problem in amateur rocketry, homemade propellant. Before that, the space enthusiasts had been scratch building metal rockets and mixing their own highly explosive propellant, which resulted in many unfortunate accidents. It was Harry Stein who wrote an article for Mechanics Illustrated Journal entitled The World's Safest Business and describing safety practices for anyone attempting to build and launch a rocket. Later, Harry Stein with his partners opened a business to produce rocket kits and safe single-use engines and in 1957 established the National Association of Rocketry to support the growing hobby of modern rocketry. The NAR provided the framework for the formation of rocketry clubs across the United States. The organization helped establish safety standards for the hobby and supported a wide range of rocketry activities, from coordinating the launches of small introductory kits to high-power custom-built rockets flown by experienced adult hobbyists. 
Today, the NAR is the oldest and largest space modeling organization in the world. I think that this is a really important exchange now more than ever. The US and Russia have always been major players in the space world or the space field. And it really is amazing to work with these kids and see and just hear like how similar we all are to each other. Everyone is talking about the same equations. Everyone is talking about the same stresses of classes. Part of why I think this is a really important exchange is that uh, the space industry is still in its infancy, but it is going so quickly. It is moving so fast. Um, and I think that it's very, very important that people that are getting into it now are supported and have this mindset for collaboration and progress uh, and to be very, very mindful of what is at stake. We decide on a project to work on in the future. Uh, I hope that uh, North Seattle has the opportunity to come visit Amr. Um, I think that'd be fantastic. Uh, I hope to be around for that. Um, and I hope that we just get to work on other projects. Uh, I anticipate that we'll continue doing Zoom sessions um, and talking about social things and talking about uh, technical things. And it's, um, I'm hopeful that the collaboration will continue. So we've been working with Amherst State University for several years now, and I was pleased to, that the, it came to a culmination. The collaboration itself is a result of, um, well, sharing information like this. Uh, this is a book on uh, Soviet-era model rocketry. It's uh, dated 1987, and it's fascinating because it's talking about all the current projects in the Soviet Union at the time. Many of our projects now are named in such a way to reflect the collaboration between Russia and the U.S. over the years. For instance, our mission patch uh, is based off the Soyuz-Apollo uh, joint project. So I thought that was very interesting that the history was really important in determining how we actually um, did things. <laughs> so the value of this project is the collaboration between the students, of course. These are our next generations of scientists and engineers, and they're going to have to live in a global world where a lot of projects are transnational. Uh, one of the things that I found so powerful about this project was that we do this, and we talk about it, and we move on. And I found that to be a really great learning experience for all of the students. And so a project like this wouldn't happen without both sides having that much generosity in their spirit. And we ended up um, finishing the project uh, via Zoom. And let me tell you, doing a technical project on Zoom is so it's so hard. Um, you, people are literally holding up things to the camera or trying to draw something on the back of a napkin and sticking that in front of the camera. But the fact there was enough trust between the two teams that we took everybody at their face and said, yep, if you say you're gonna do that, we believe you're gonna do that, and it turned out to be true. So when that rocket launched at Brothers uh, and the payload came out of it, you know, normally your, your reaction is to clap and to holler and say great things. Everybody just looked around and they looked relieved. It worked, you know? And, it, and the clapping and the high-fiving happened later, but I thought that was a very interesting reaction. Now, um, I really want this to continue because, um, you know, I've demonstrated that this can happen, this can work, even over a remote connection, it can work, and um, it can work going either way, and that's what we hope to demonstrate. So we're hoping that a contingent of North Seattle students and faculty will go to Amherst State University. There is a similarity of this project with 1975, when Soviet and American engineers had been working on the extremely difficult task of docking the Soyuz and Apollo spacecrafts in space, which were totally different by their design and had different docking system. Engineers of both countries also had to solve the problems of methodological compatibility and even a language barrier. 
The success of the Soyuz Apollo experimental flight more than 47 years ago was a symbol of detente between the two superpowers during the Cold War, diffusing international tension and developing cooperation in space research and exploration. The spacecrafts of the USSR and the USA, two space powers that were competing along the entire azimuth of economics and politics, docked in space from the first ever unified international orbital station. Thank you very much for uh, all your kindness, all your you know hospitality. I can't believe you brought this 12,000 miles. Okay. Honestly, all the bottles of liquids. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, um, personal engagement is how this world is going to get to be a better place. If it can be done through rocketry, so much the better. Thank you for coming. Lift off. Lift off. Thank you